I'm John Little, and this is the Shockcast. Altitude, velocity, light. In ass down. 220 feet. 15 forward. Eleven forward, coming down nicely. Okay, we've had a problem here. Let's bring this to a conclusion. And there's only one conclusion that can be made. The Central Intelligence Agency of the United States of America is the biggest criminal empire in the history of the world. There is literally no other conclusion that can be made. As horrifying as that statement may sound, the numbers don't lie. And the facts cannot be avoided. We can argue the details all day long, but the conclusion stays the same. And the ironic part of this was that it started so innocently with Operation Gladio. There's a part of me that can't believe what I'm seeing. I knew for years that something like this was happening. There was no other way for 93% of the world's heroin to originate from Afghanistan when the U.S. controls the airspace and all ports of entry. This just can't happen any other way. However, it's one thing to merely suspect that a thing is true. It is something else to actually see the network that they were using. To see it grow from its infancy, to take its first baby steps, and then launch into the monstrosity that rules so much of the criminal underworld. For the CIA to do this, the amount of control that they must have over the criminal networks around the world must be immense. They also need to control the FBI, the Department of Justice, the Pentagon. They need to control any politician that might have any oversight into their activities. They would need to control the media to make sure that any and all news reports would be deflected from their criminal activities. And they would need to make sure that they maintain this control quietly with complete finesse. Remember that secret operations routinely expose themselves when an important compo component screws up. That's how we know about Operation Gladio. The Italian arm of these stay-behind armies made stupid mistakes, and the whole operation was revealed. It was a painful lesson for the CIA, but one that they have taken to heart. They have learned how to keep their secret operation secret, and I'm betting that 99% of the official employees of the CIA have no idea that any of this is happening. Remember that the CIA employees are patriots of the First Order. They are passionate about their country and its safety. I have friends who were in the CIA and some that still are in that evil organization. They are wonderful Christian brothers who have no idea of the vast evil that the CIA is involved in. And I would trust those men with my life, and you would too if you knew them. But, the CIA, but what the CIA is doing is truly monstrous. I doubt that I have done so much as touch even the tip of the iceberg. I have just talked about the heroin trafficking. Trafficking. There's also cocaine. And I've heard numerous reports about their activities there. And those reports offer firm proof that they really are in control of the cocaine business. What else are they involved in? Basically, they are involved in anything that has a gigantic profit margin, and if it makes a huge profit, they are in it. Human trafficking, child pornography, electronic theft. I know someone who had a lot of money stolen from him or her from his bank account, and the bank, for some reason, could not recover the money. That should not have happened. It should not have been possible for them to be unable to recover that money the way it was stolen. Was a criminal arm of the CIA involved? As someone who understands how banks work, it should not, again, it should not have been possible for that money to dis disappear without a trace the way that it did. But it did disappear, and some of it seemed to disappear into Southeast Asia, if I remember correctly. How much control over the banks does the CIA have? For them to control the heroin trade, they must be able to control the banks. One of the most reliable reports about CIA cocaine trade comes from a helicopter pilot called named Gene Chip Tatum, employed by the CIA, who found out that he was running cocaine into Arkansas. 
Chip did other things for the CIA, and whenever he needed money for a job, all that he had to do was go to a certain bank on Wall Street, and they would give him millions of dollars, if that's what the operation needed, in cash, no questions asked. And the proof of, that he offers is compelling, even to a cynic like myself. Remember that the banks don't have police powers, they don't have a military, they have no way of protecting themselves from a criminal enterprise like the CIA, which does have police powers and which does have a military. Could the banks hope to survive when faced with something as psychopathic and as powerful as the CIA? Please think this through with me on this. You might think that the banks are all powerful, but all that cash can't stop a bullet, and they know it. Remember also that this criminal enterprise started out within the CIA. They were dealing with a threat from the Soviet Union, and there was nothing that they would not do to stop that threat. And they got the FBI to help with that threat. Do any of you remember that J. Edgar Hoover denied the existence of the Italian Mafia until 1957? Remember that Hoover created the FBI in 1924 and directly ran it until his death in 1971. He was not a stupid man. He knew that the Mafia existed. He knew that the mob existed. He denied both until too many of his own agents saw too much on November 14, 1957 in Alapachin, New York. Was Hoover owned by the Mafia? Did the CIA own the Mafia? Did the CIA own Hoover? Unfortunately, there's just no way for the CIA's heroin operation to survive this long if they did not own the FBI, the DEA, the NSA, and every other national organization with, it, with police powers. And I seriously doubt that the Mafia could have stayed independent from the CIA since the CIA could have torn the Mafia into little pieces at any moment that they chose to. If you think that I'm overblowing all this, tell me how else the thousands of tons of heroin could be distributed throughout the world without being stopped every year. Also, while you are doing that, explain to me how the U.S. Air Force refuses to spray the 328,000 hectares or 1 or, or 1,266 square miles of opium under cultivation in Afghanistan, and that's just the official figures on how much land is being used to cultivate opium in Afghanistan. You can see the opium flowers from space. You have thousands of square miles of opium poppies under cultivation, and the U.S. Air Force refuses to spray those opium poppies with herbicide. Doesn't that tell you something? It tells me that the U.S. Air Force is under the control of the CIA at the top. Not everyone in the Air Force is under the control of the CIA, just the people at the top, and some of the pilots flying some of the transports. Are you seeing how deep this must go? Again, this started with an operation to help save Europe from a Soviet takeover, and it has morphed into something so big and monstrous that it's hard to know where it begins and where it ends. In fact, it's so huge that it doesn't matter if you and I talk about this. After all, we're just conspiracy theorists. Now, you might think that all of the above is just the reason why I'm talking about this. Most crazed conspiracy theory nuts would stop right there and consider this a job well done. But that's not what this is about. Look at the book of Revelation. Look at the rise of the beast. That is what we are talking about here. And no, I'm not saying that the CIA is the beast, but I believe that it's part of it, or it will be, after Ezekiel's fire. Remember, something glues the world back together after Ezekiel's fire happens. Ezekiel's fire will destroy so much of the world's infrastructure that something or someone will need to put the pieces back together, and whoever does that will wind up in control of what has been reconstituted. They'll rule the world. Who better to do this than the CIA with its vast global criminal networks? Is the CIA the seven-headed red dragon that revives the beast in Revelation 12? I think it's possible, but I don't know. What I do know is that there is a vast network that is working tirelessly to bring us to the days of the coming of the Antichrist, and I would not have seen it 
for myself if I hadn't grabbed hold of an article on a disreputable website and followed the rabbit hole to its incontrovertible conclusion. It's the last days, and we shouldn't be surprised at how this has turned out. But I can't help but being completely shocked and really upset at what I'm seeing. Hey, you like that video, right? Great. Click like and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified. Then go to the next level. Subscribe to The Shock Letter at theshockletter.com and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Now, read my book, Ezekiel's Fire, at ezekielsfire.com. Why? Because Ezekiel's Fire is coming.